it's nice to have you. Um, before we get started on today's project, um, I want to give you a couple of reminders. Um, the first is that our summer celebration is August 3rd through September 30th, so in a few weeks, and um, our holiday mini catalog also launches August 3rd, and this goes through January 3rd, I believe. Yes, January 3rd. So these are two publications that are coming up August 3rd, full of fabulous products. Um, first time ever that Stampin' Up! is giving us a second celebration in the same year. And you all know that our winter celebration is our biggest annual promotion. So we're hoping that this summer celebration um, going on with the launch of the new holiday catalog will certainly be um, awesome as well. I think it will be there. It's full of great products that you can get free with qualifying purchases. Um, you can get free product and more extra um, when you host a party. And that will be, um, it can be virtual, it can be in person. I've already got a virtual party um, scheduled with Joyce for first week of um, August. And I would love to add more to the schedule. And of course, there are extra incentives for people to join during August and September. So look for that soon. If you're a current customer of mine, you've made a, a place to stamp up order with me, over the last year, you will be getting this in the mail. Um, and I even mailed one to myself. One has, um, mine has arrived as of yesterday. I heard from a couple people today that they got there, so they're starting to reach mailboxes. Um, if it gets to be August 3rd and you don't have yours and you think you should have been on that list to receive one, let me know and I'll get another one out in the mail. If you are new to Stamp in Peace with Mary Nave, and you don't have a demonstrator that you're currently working with, I would love to be your biz, uh, be your demonstrator and help you with your stamp and piece needs. And the easiest way I can start doing that is by sending you complimentary catalog. Um, so if you are in need of a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, just message me your catalog request, your full name, um, address, and email, and I'll be sure and get that in the mail to you. I'm going to flip my camera around now so we can get started on this evening's project. And while I'm doing that, if you would please share this live, I would appreciate it very much. Somebody even um, typed in that they just copy and paste the URL and that's awesome too. So whatever way you can share, I'm happy that you um, that you do that and I'm happy to, happy to have you watching. If you've been around my Stampin' Peace business or um, in the Stampin' Up! community in any way, you've probably often heard us refer to casing, C-A-S-E, how to case a card. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight and that's what we're actually going to do. This is a card I used um, for a blog hop yesterday, the ICS July fun with designer series paper blog hop. That's a mouthful, but boy, is that right up my alley, right? Designer series paper. I love working with designer series paper, and it's typically the first product that I pull when I sit down to design cards and other paper crafting projects. And we all tried to feature one that is on sale right now for the 15% off, and Tidings of Christmas is one of those. So I just wanna want you to note in this annual catalog, we have nine designer series papers that are on sale, 15% off through August 2nd only, okay? 15% off through August 2nd only, and I'll just quickly point out which they are. Beauty of the Earth, Bloom Where You're Planted, Hand Penned, In Good Taste, in the Wild, Pansy Petals, Sweet Symmetry, Tidings of Christmas, that's the one I used on that card, 
and you're a peach. So if you like any of those um, and have some ideas of how you want to use those for card making and scrapbooking and more, um, I suggest you order those now while they're on sale, okay? 15% off those nine. Oh, many people have jumped back on, uh, jumped on since we got started. Thank you, I'm glad you're here. So what I'm going to do tonight is walk you through the process of casing. A lot of times we see something on Pinterest or in the Stampin' Up! catalog or on somebody's blog or YouTube or Facebook and we think, oh, I wanna make that. But then you think, I don't have all those things. I don't have the die that cuts that. I'm not ready to make Christmas cards. Um, I don't have the stitched rectangles that she used. It can be any number of things, but what casing means is create and share everything. So when people put something they make on social media, they're basically like telling the crafting world or the stamping world, it's okay for you to create this too, for you to make this too. For some people, casing can be very literal. You might look at this and think, oh, I love Mary's card. I have all of those things. I'm going to make it exactly the same. I love it that much. Or you might just want to change up parts of it. Or you just might want to change up pretty much everything, but keep the same basic layout. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to change out the colors. I'm going to change out the designer series paper. I'm changing out the stamp set. Um, I'm changing out the dies, okay? So it's going to be a totally different card, but yet I'm going to use the same basic card layout or card sketch. So let me show you how to do that. And what I'm, first of all, I said we we're gonna change out that die. I switched from the Tasteful Labels dies to the, um, let me think tailor-made tags dies, and I pre-cut some um, just for the sake of time. I'm switching out the stamp set from Tidings and Trimmings to Biggest Wish. I'm going to make some birthday cards. I'm using the In the Wild. Now, I am not like somebody who's like really enjoys wild animals, especially cats. <laughs> so this is really bringing myself out of my comfort zone using this. Um, and a lot of designer series papers, I might buy two or three packs, I bought one. So um, this is kind of forcing me out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to do it. And then I looked at the colors included in this designer series paper and just pulled out some samples of the ones I thought I might like to use. So now I'm going to look at this and I'm think, okay, I need a DSP for the background here. Let me move some of these things out of the way. I also pulled the ink pads in those four colors. I pulled Cajun Craze, Crush Curry, Evening Evergreen, and Soft Succulent. But I know I have one piece of designer series paper that serves as a background, and then I need three others from the same pack. So I looked through this just a little bit. I just opened it before. Um, I think I'll use this for the background. And because it's so busy and so colorful, I want something maybe a little more subtle for my three stripes. Um, let's see here, deciding if I want that. Or maybe I'll go with the, this one instead because we're doing, then it's like all animal prints for the strips. So this is what I'm going to work with. Now, and I lost my little cheat sheet, so I'm gonna have to remeasure here. So this piece of designer series paper measures five by three and three quarters, five by three and three quarter inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this now. Actually, I'm gonna do it this way. 
if your designer series paper is directional, pay attention to what direction you want your card to go when you're cutting it, okay? So there's my three and three quarter by five. And then each of my strips, and I think I can cut all three of these at once, each of the strips measures one and three quarters by three and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna fill you in right here that on this card, I actually used a stitched rectangle die and it measures exactly one and a quarter by three and a quarter. So there's an example too, where somebody might not have the stitched rectangles and they're just going to cut strips. Or perhaps you see a card where they're using strips, but you think, hmm, this might be a great time to pull out those stitched rectangles. See, so you can go back and forth. But again, casing is you're just looking um, at something and pulling your ideas from there, whether you change a little bit or change a lot of what you see. Those are one and a quarter. Oops, what did I say by three and a quarter, right? One and a quarter by three and a quarter. I'm just gonna cut the others to some more in case I want to make more than one card. I have it all ready. that aside and now I'm going to pick a card base and I also need a different color of cardstock to mount this on so I think I'm just going to go real random here and um, I don't know what I'm gonna use I think I will use this as my card base and behind here, I'm gonna make it real bright by using a piece of crushed curry. And I want that just an eighth of an inch larger. So I had five by three and a quarter. So now, no, five by three and three quarters. So now I'm gonna cut this five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. Ooh, I think that'll look real sharp with that bright crushed curry behind. Okay, are any of you into the wild animals, the jungle prints, things like that? Now I have this basic part done. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my card front. I had a fun and interesting day. I'll have to, I'll have to tell you about it at the end. Now I'm going to take these three strips. Notice these two look a little more solid this looks a little lighter, so I'm going to put that lighter one in the middle. Marion, you really like the colors? Okay. Marilyn Scorker, thanks for sharing. I'm going to, okay, and this, this side I'm covering up here, I just have to say that is my favorite print in the whole pack of In the Wild DSP. I love it so much. Um, and to me, it doesn't say anything about, you know, the wild. I thought I could use this for birthday cards. I could use it for sympathy cards. I could use it for note cards. Now, when you, you see when I'm adding the strips, I am being fairly generous with my multi-purpose glue. And I'm 
I'm using that multi-purpose glue and being generous with it right now so that I can move these strips around, line everything up evenly, get even spacing around the pieces so it all looks really nice. So that, that multi-purpose glue is kind of forgiving for us. So there's, oh, did I cut that the same? I guess I did, it looks different. The sizing looks different with the yellow, interesting. Maybe because this print is busier than that soft succulent print. I don't know, but it kind of threw me off there. But it is the same size. And now I'm going to use one of these labels tailor-made tags right there, I think. And um, I'm going to use the Biggest Wish stamp set. You can see this is the first I'm using it, and I love this. I'm going to use the Solid Birthday and, and the Scripty Happy. straight. Is that the right one? That doesn't look, oh, I have it upside down. That's why it didn't look right to me. There we go. There's my P's. I was seeing two D's and I thought, what's that? <laughs> okay. So I think for this, what I will do is stamp the birthday, the solid birthday letters in Crush Curry. Middle of that tag, excuse the top of my head while I look over this for a second. Try and get it straight. Ooh, that's pretty juicy. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to redo it a little bit. I just re-inked a lot of my ink pads. I just think that's a little bit much. I'm going to flip this over and try again. Oh, that's a little better. I like that better. See? Way too juicy. So, oh, there's my trick. I should have told you what I'm doing. So take a plastic spoon, um, this is a bone folder, um, an old gift card, something like that, and just kind of push the ink away. Um, and you can smooth it out later or add more ink. It's not a big deal. But if it's too juicy, that's all I do. Because sometimes it's hard to tell when you're re-inking them how much ink you're really getting in, and especially after you let it settle for a while. And then... I think I will go over that with Evening Evergreen. I'm going to put, so I'm going to stamp happy on top of the birthday in Evening Evergreen. And there's my tag. I will now attach this with Oops, those are minis. I can need the big glue dots this time. Just like that. I think it needs a bow or something. So I have these two in Evening Evergreen. Let's see, that's a lighter one. And this chevron weave is just thicker. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna make a bow. I'm gonna use the, this um, thicker, heavier ribbon and just knot it like that.
and I'll use a mini glue dot on the back of that knot to adhere this in place on my tag. So what do you think? Not bad. So there's an example of a case. Now, if you showed these, both of these cards to somebody, they might not even realize that I looked at the one card in order to be inspired and make that second card with that same layout. Isn't that cool? So that's what casing is all about. Casing, copy and share, or create and share everything. Put it out there so other people can enjoy it and create too. And that's why I ask you to share um, the things that you make. Because I oftentimes have learned um, a new technique or a new um, color combination from somebody else or a new card layout. I love that. And certainly we can all learn from each other. We all have something to share and we all have um, new things to learn. And that's what is exciting and fun about the paper crafting world and the Stampin' Up! community that we get to do that. Um, should we try one more? Do oh, you, you wanna hang in with me for one more? I'm just gonna flip these over and look at the other sides. Anybody want to do one more? You know what? I've got, I see a thumbs up. I'm taking that as a yes, Mary, make something else. Okay, so let's do something more. I'm thinking this. Now, there are lots of greens here. I'm thinking this is the background. Um, actually, I have a smaller piece. Or I'm thinking of this as being a third stripe, but let me see, what would I put it on then? Ooh, that, would, that could be fun. See, isn't that pretty? My favorite one in the whole, whole shebang there. Um, oh, wait, I think there's a couple that we haven't used. So let's see what's in here. There's that. This, a bunch of color. I was looking to see if there's something more. We haven't used that one. Okay, somebody, or this might be too much because we're gonna be, yeah, that's gonna be too much. I think we should go with this one as a background and then make these three our stripes. So again, I'm going to cut my background DSP first, which is five inches by three and three quarter. And I have something totally different to do for the middle. just seen a little pop-up message from Marilyn Scorker. This is a great idea and I have heard this. I don't always take the time to do it. Marilyn says, if you stamp with your Versamark first, put the Versamark on your um, new photopolymer stamps and then clean them and then stamp with them in any color. It keeps these from um, staining so much. They look a lot cleaner. But of course, like she said, if it's a red, um, Blackberry Bliss, those real deep reds, Cherry Cobbler, there's nothing you can do about that. And then she says, thank you for all your Facebook videos. You are appreciated. Oh, Marilyn, that means so much to me. Thank you. Those are the kinds of messages I get that just, um, how should I say, just fill me up, keep me motivated, keep me excited and happy about what I'm doing. So thank you. I really do appreciate hearing things like that. Use the Versamark each time with the reds and such. Okay, okay. I will start giving that a try. And that's very timely with, um, the holiday season coming up 
and all the reds, things like that. Okay. Ooh, look, oh, this one's too long. This needs to be three and a quarter inch. So each of those strips is one and a quarter by three and a quarter. And remember too, as part of casing, you might just say, you know, I'm just gonna do one inch strips. Or you might wanna make them shorter and make the background smaller. You can even make changes like that. All right, let's see here. I'm thinking do Cajun Craze as my card base. Hmm. And then I'm trying to decide, do I want that? Oh, that looks kind of sharp. Or do I want the... the yellow? Any thoughts? Would you go soft succulent? Or would you go crush curry? Yep, I just read that message, Marilyn. Yep, it popped up during the live on the side. Um, so yeah, that's why I read it and shared it with everybody. Any thoughts? I'm thinking we should go with soft succulent, just a little more subtle. Okay, Char's the first one to respond and she agrees. Sharon Ware has the same thought. Okay, let's do that. So I, I guess I could cut that one in half because I don't have a piece of scrap that size. So I'm going to cut my soft succulent five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. Five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And I'm going to do something totally different than the tag. which you may or may not like. I think you will. Remember too, you might even want to, um, no, I don't wanna use that bone folder, it has ink on. Um, use some of your DSP on the inside of your card. Maybe, I don't, didn't do it here, maybe go across or one here, um, something like this. This is short, but you know, put a piece of white on there and lay a DSP strip on that. I think that could be really neat too. Now I'm gonna switch over to my multi-purpose glue. Remember why? because I want to have the time to slide these around if I want to. Carol, thanks so much for sharing. I appreciate you guys. When you share um, or suggest to other people that they come on over to my page or follow me or something like that, I just consider that a big compliment. Um, any kind of referral is the best kind of compliment in my book. Okay, see, I need to move these over a little bit. And you might even want more spacing between your strips. You know, you decide, it's your card. Pull that one out a little. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I have the main portion already cased and now I'm going to do something totally different instead of that big tag I'm going to where is it here I didn't want to start a new piece I'm going to cut out one of these animals and put it on there um, I know some of you don't mind fussy cutting. Others of you are like, no way, Mary, not doing the fussy cutting. So which one should we do? I'm thinking they're all fairly easy to cut. So should we stick to the subtle? 
with this one or that one? Tell me what you think. First person to respond. Should I do crushed curry, Cajun craze, or a soft succulent? Marion Hendricks says do the yellow. Okay, she wants it to really stand out. I think I'm gonna do this one that's laying down. Before I get going to my close finish cutting, I'm just gonna cut it out. It's easier to work with a smaller piece of paper. And I'm just leaving a little border of white. You can decide if you want to cut right on the edge of the animal or shape or whatever you would be cutting. Or if you want to just leave that little white border all the way around. And you can see I can cut this, fussy cut this fairly quickly. And by the way, when people say fussy cut, all they mean is cutting with scissors instead of using a die or a punch or a machine. It's really just our old fashioned cut it out when we say fussy cutting. And this one is not too terribly fussy. And I don't worry, something like this, I don't worry about, well, that could be the fur, but if there are open spaces, I don't worry about that too much. Oh, look at that. That I think is gonna look pretty cool. Let's pop this guy up on some dimensionals. Does anybody else have this paper? I'm always curious, I went to a card swap a, um, not a card buffet, what do I want to say? I can't think of what I'm trying to say here. But anyways, we, everybody prepares a, um, a card for say, like if there's 10 people attending, they cut everything for 10 people. And then, um, everybody goes and makes each other's cards that have been designed. Shoebox swap, that's what I'm trying to think of, shoebox swap. And somebody, the first place I sat down is um, somebody used this suite. And I was like, oh, this is just not me. But it was a really cute card she designed. Um, so it was fun. So that's what made me buy this paper and think, okay, sometimes I just need to step out of my comfort zone, step out of my box, because I'm sure there are people out there who do like this paper. And you know what this reminds me of too? Um, this suite is, do you ever watch, um, on? it's on Saturday mornings, and during the week I get up and start my day by having coffee and watching the Today Show. But on Saturday mornings, Dylan Dreyer, and then, oh, I can't think of the other woman. Dylan Dreyer has a show. I think it's called Into the Wild. So, so interesting. And then, um, oh, I can't think of her name. The one that comes on afterwards and also is a co-host of the Today Show. She does one called Wild Child. And both the shows are about wild animals and different habitats and things like that. It's very, very interesting if you're into that kind of thing, which I'm really not, but it's interesting to me. Um, I'm just, let's see. I'm just looking for a small happy birthday to put on here. Let's use this one from Sweet as a Peach. I think this size will be perfect. But yeah, I, I enjoy that show if I'm, if I sleep in a little bit and then get up and turn on the TV and have my coffee, it's kind of a good show. Very educational and great for kids too. All right, so this is one of those strips I have left over from when I cut my five and a quarter by four inch pieces. 
of basic white to put on the inside of my cards. I always save those. Um, or any strip like that. I, I tend to save, oops, that's not even straight, Mary. I think this is not exactly the size. Let me try a different one because it's not going in there. But that way you're not always cutting the, all those little strips when you need them. You've got some handy. And I know I'm going to need a fairly short one, but sometimes if you cut it to size, it's kind of hard to slide it in there. So that's why I work with it longer. And what I'm going to do is, and I want to stamp this in, I don't know. I think I'll go ahead and stamp it in Evening Evergreen. So I do it this way and then stamp however close to the end that I want it. And then I just take my paper snips and cut the other end so that my sentiment looks centered. So that's a tip for when you want just a, a little banner. It makes it easier to slide in. And I'm just gonna put it right there with a couple of, oh, that's not quite straight. That will drive me nuts. Just like that. And look at how different this one is from that one. And yet both of them I cased from this original um, Christmas card I made. By the way, this is on, um, it's on my blog right now. I posted it yesterday and then I shared it to Facebook and such today. So it's real recent. You can, it's the latest post, so you can see that. Um, I feel like I want something here, but I'm not sure what I want. Um, I, let's see here. How about, look at this. These are the holiday rhinestones. Oh, people who order my um, Tidings of Christmas class to go, you get a half package of this designer series paper and you get a full package of the holiday rhinestones as part of the class. And I think I'm just going to put one large one up here like that. Maybe I want it down. Maybe I want it right in the middle. And put it like that, I think. And then I'm going to take a couple of the small ones and place them near the banner also, not like that. Oh yeah, that's a perfect embellishment to go with this guy. Alrighty, everybody, any questions? Marian says, nice fussy cutting. She likes that, just that little small amount of white around the edges. I think it makes it stand out more, um, kind of makes it more of a focal point. Um, so I think that's why I like to leave that white edge. Um, any questions? Oh, okay, let me tell you about my day. So I don't know if you heard or not, or I should say read or not, um, I did share on Facebook, oh, late afternoon, early evening, Monday, that my oldest daughter, Andrea, got engaged to John, and we're very happy about that. So um, we've got some wedding planning in the works. They're hoping for um, late spring, early summer wedding. Um, we're going to look at a venue tomorrow evening. But in the meantime, 
Emily came home from uh, University of Cincinnati where she's in grad school. Uh, this is her last year of physical therapy school and she's off for a few weeks and then she will start a clinical at one of OSU's facilities. So she had to go to campus, the main campus, to the main hospital to get a background check done. And um, I said, well, I'll go over with you. I haven't been to campus in a long time. I'll go over with you. We can walk or have lunch or something. So I um, called Andrea last night and asked her to meet us over there. We had lunch at one of our favorite places, um, Adriatico's Pizza. And it was so funny because while we were talking about it and uh, Andrea, Emily said something about, oh, Andrea probably has all kinds of lists and plans done already because Andrea is the planner in our family. And she said, well, in my notebook, I did do da 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 da. And then I was thinking, oh, and we need to remember this, this and this. And it just got to be so silly. And um, so Emily's been teasing us that, uh, oh, she and I are out of control. But then I did catch Emily doing, uh, looking at Andrea's Pinterest. So she's excited too. And of course, Emily will be the maid of honor. But it was just lots of fun talking and planning. And then when we came home, Emily said, well, Andrea went to her house and Emily obviously came back with me. She's staying with me this week. She said, oh, I bought tie-dye stuff. Do you have a white shirt for yourself? So she and I sat in the backyard and um, did some tie-dye. So I'll have to let you know Friday. Maybe I'll even wear it, how that turned out. But I started thinking today that, um, you know, I should flip this around instead of, let me see if I can do that. Where's my thingy here? Come on. There we go. Um, so you can see me and I'll pretend that I see you. But anyways, I started thinking, okay, this is a fun, different craft. Um, something I did with my kids when they were little. And I started thinking, this is almost like a traditional um, summer activity for Emily. And she's 24 and it's still fun. She still gets a kick out of it. She plans it, she bought the stuff. But I thought, how fun. And it's just a good example, a reminder to me that it's not always about the big things. All those little things are just as important as planning for the big days like graduations and weddings. Um, and I just so appreciate that my girls enjoy those simple moments and the simple activities. Um, just good for the soul, good for a mom's soul. So that was my fun day. <laughs> but anyways, um, thanks for letting me share that with you. So I hope you like today's cards. I hope you like the lesson on casing. And, um, and I hope you picked up some tips too. Um, for example, about um, when your ink pad's too juicy, you can move the ink around. Um, what other tips? There was something else. Oh, the tip about short banners and how to use the punch and make it easy without too much um, stress. Because we don't need stress in stamping. We don't need stress in paper crafting. This is fun, enjoyable, um, enjoyable for us. And then we're spreading joy to other people when we share our creations and send our cards. All righty. All right, everybody, good night. Thanks for um, being here. Bye-bye.